On today's road trip, we're going to take a closer look at this 1966 Ford Thunderbird convertible. I think you're going to like this car. It's definitely one of my favorites. Um, Hank is the owner. Hank, thanks for inviting us to your garage again. Yep. Um, what can you tell us about this car? Well, so this was an accidental purchase. Um, my cousin Ernie was actually looking at buying it, and uh, he knew I had a 61, and I was familiar with the convertible top mechanism, so he asked me to come with him when he looked at it. So I went with him, and I ended up buying it. Oh, yeah? Um, from him. But, um, but uh, I just really like 66s. Uh, I like 64 fives and 6s. These are called flare birds. Flare birds. Flare birds. My, my uncle Bob had one of these new when I was a kid. As a Townland Val, I always remember the car. I always thought it had a really neat, neat interior, and it really was a great-looking car. And, Definitely. Uh, and it really is. So, so this is the last year of a three-year body run for uh, Ford Motor Company, and uh, four fives and sixes are all very similar. Um, this this started the whole wall wall taillight thing. You know, the yeah. Has it has sequential taillights, so when you Put on the turn signal, you know, they clink, clink it. Very cool. In the direction that you're going. Very and, cool. Uh, uh, when they work. Uh, when they don't work, they don't blink at all. <laughs> uh, oh, really? It's all or nothing? Right, right. Well, you know, uh, it's like life. And um, <laughs> and the, the other big issue, uh, so this is the first year Ford taillights right across the entire back of the car. They carried that all the way up through, you know, the late, uh, the, the late 70s. And... Uh, this is also the first year for a regular blade front bumper. There were front bumper standards put into effect by um, our friends in Washington who were getting into the car design business. And, uh, <laughs> uh, prior to this, 64s and 5s and 61 twos and 3s all have a bumper that kind of curls up, right? Yeah. And a bar that runs across here, and then the grill is below that. This has a blade bumper. Uh, meaning, meaning there's sheet metal below the bumper and sheet metal above the bumper. Okay. And uh, this was a one-year only um, effort to do that. To yeah. Meet, to meet federal standards, I actually like. I prefer this to the fours and fives. It's a little cleaner. But you know, it's it's really up to every individual. So this, um, they did not have a sports roaster option in '66. Um, yeah. And everything became an option in '66. So. Fender skirts, um, and of course Ford didn't call them fender skirts, they called them fender shields. Um, they were an option. Um, the tonneau cover, that was a dealer installed option if you wanted to get it. Love the tonneau cover. Um, um, same thing with the Kelsey Hayes wire wheels. Um, Is that what these are? Are these Kelsey yeah, Hayes? Right. Mm -hmm. Ver same as you'd see on a 63. Yeah. Do these, 62. do these have tubes in them? Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. yeah, they won't hold air otherwise. You can try it, but they'll go. Forward. I didn't know if they had the rubber band around it well, around the wheel. You or... know, um, I got to tell you, I've tried it all. These these are tubes. I can tell you that right now. But so, just go with the tubes and right, and be done with it, and be done with and it, and not have a flat tire. So, so, um, uh, and of course, this is the last year for convertible in the Thunderbird line until you get to the. Um, retro birds, yeah. right? Um, no two, no fives. Are correct, they? right, right. So, so this is the end of the convertible top for Ford. Now, this top, uh, this top looks brand new. It, well, it is. That's why it looks that way. <laughs> you know, <laughs> look how flat it's looking. We, we try, this... try to make, try to keep it looking like this. Yeah. Um, well, we talked about possibly opening the roof yeah. and. Well, it's got to go down sometime. You it know? does. So, so it doesn't have to go down today. Uh, but I, we'll... I, ideally, <laughs> the car should be running. This takes a lot of voltage to um, to, to work run. it. Right. It's more than the regular convertible. Well, there's a lot happening to but make this the top. A, so this is a retractable convertible top. It uses many of the same components that the retractable you know, uh, uh, Skyliners used yes. at, at, with Ford from 57 to 59. So um, again, you know, the deck lid opens up backward yeah. with, with screw jacks. Um, yep. Then the convertible top starts to close like a regular convertible and then it flips upside down and it finishes closing and collapses in the trunk and then the deck lid shuts with a separate flipper panel. So this, this panel that the convertible top is laying on there are actually two of them. Yeah. There's this one and a twin in the trunk that's closed like a clamshell. So it's um it looks great with the tonneau cover. Right. Just six, six blending relays. right into the back it's of the really car. Six relays that work in two different directions. So um 
it's a it's a complex system. Anyway, so shared by the Lincoln, right? Fort yeah. Lincoln. Um, I noticed the Thunderbird emblem yeah. here on this little mirror. Yep, that, and that's a 64, 5, and 6 item. Door handles, again, Thunderbird only, 4, 5, and 6. Yeah. Um, there's some decoration on the body. There's a scoop on the fender that 65s have, that 4s, 64, and 6s don't have. But generally speaking, they're very similar cars. Interesting, okay, this is just a little trivia item, right? Um, Ford went backward, um, 61, 2, and 3, curved side glass, compound curved side glass on side do side windows. Yeah. Uh, these are as flat as a, as a pool table. Yeah. Uh, it's cheaper. And they use this windshield with Lincoln, too. And oh, really? Cowl, yeah, to save money. They're both built at the... The cowl Wixom. and the windshield? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Both built at the Wixom assembly plant. And so when they brought this out to get rid of the curved side glass, right, yeah. it widened... The dimensions of the car they were having Lincoln was smaller than all the other luxury cars and they were trying to stretch it and make it a little more competitive so of course the largest luxury car we all know is a Chrysler Imperial uh, larger than a Cadillac larger than a Lincoln we do now <laughs> <laughs> and uh, right in the trivia department um, so they were doing everything they could do to stretch it a little bit so they brought this out and so the side glass is flat on 64, 5, and 6. It didn't matter on sales because 64, 5, and 6s were more popular than 61, 2, and 3 Thunderbirds. Yeah. The production numbers were much higher. So that was this car was a home run for them, for Ford. And, uh, it's a really pretty car. Very successful. Got yeah, a little a, trim here. That's a not really a functioning scoop, but it looks like No, it. they all had scoop. All the T-Birds had scoops starting in 55, you know. Oh, it's got a pretty uh, pointed edge here for the turn signal. signal. That's to hurt you when you're drawing it off. Yeah. Right. That's the hand catcher. Well thought yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, right. Perfectly positioned for that. Yeah. Um, you going to pop the hood? Yeah. This is a... Um, this was... A, so for a number of years, right, from 61 um, up to, I think, 65, 390s were the only engines available. Um, beginning in um, when did the 428? This is it. Yeah, beginning in 66. 66. 428 okay. was. This is not a 428 car. But it was first offered in 66. I, I believe so. But I'm sure you. This is an air comment, That's that's what the comment column is on your on your feed. You know, yeah. for, for for people who get the info wrong. <laughs> um, um, but this, yeah, this is an all original. Um, and it's an air conditioned car. Yes, right. Which is uh -huh. a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, this is a really smooth running car. I when we had this apart, you know, the paint is still on the uh, valve springs on this car. Really? Yeah, it's unbelievable. As soon as I saw that, I knew I'd made a good decision because yeah. obviously this this car had a lot of service. never been monkeyed with. No, well, and and the oil was changed frequently. I mean, there was zero sludge. It was like brand new inside. Yeah, it's, it's, so those oil changes make a difference, you know. They do. You know, if you're gonna skip stuff, don't skip the oil changes. No. Uh -uh. Having an air-conditioned convertible in the 60s is a big deal. You don't yeah. think about it now, yeah. but this you either got air or you was a convertible. There, very right. rarely did you get both. Yep. But this is nice. Yeah. It's a big motor. It's very clean in here. You yeah, so the, the, uh, this, the nickname for this car is Snowball, right? It has nothing to do with the color. When I bought it, I just thought I'd do a couple little things to it and drive it. And I thought, well, you know, I'll do this, I'll do that. Well, the whole thing snowballed. <laughs> into, into, a, into a restaurant. Has nothing to do with the color? No, uh-uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> well, I guess you could call every classic car that we own a, a, a snowball. My friend Ron at the shop, he, he, he nicknamed it one day, oh, we're going to work on snowball. <laughs> <laughs> because every time I came in, you know, well, Ron, you know, how about we do? Well, it's a good name for the car. Yeah, I love snowball. Snowball is... Uh, I love the wheels with the wider white walls. That looks so cool with the white paint. You know, it had, it had wide, wide white walls when I bought it. Oh, it had the gangsters? Yeah, I took those off. Oh, you're not a fan of gangster whites? Well, I, I like them on certain cars, not on, not on, not on this car. No, no. I'm going to open this passenger door if I could. Sure. And I want to show everybody how thick and big this door is. Right, yeah. I noticed it's, it's obviously very heavy, but look how wide it is. Yeah, it's just very heavy. Right. And well, one this was, a, this was a very nice, you know, personal luxury car. You know, Ford wasn't kidding when he Yeah. Was. Well, this was a big deal car back in the day. It is now. Mm -hmm. And one thing, the metal on these cars are is so thick and heavy. 
You don't see too much, uh, too many with door dings. No. I mean, it's got to be a hell of a shot in order to dent it. Yeah. But they're really nice and clean in here. Red interior matching uh, vinyl on the tonneau. Very nice. Door panels look great. The battery's disconnected on this, so. We'll hook it up in a minute. We'll hook it up. Let me get in here real quick. Maybe show this side of the dash. It's a little dark. Yeah, Sorry yeah, about that. Come around here and do this side of the dash. Okay. Because this is one of those unusual Teeper or uh, Ford Fords with pretty much full instrumentation, which is not a Ford. Love the console. Ford thing. Yeah. With the uh, window switches there in the middle. Let me uh, go around that side. Walk around the back, it's a little tight. Again, there's a door panel, and very the nice. The door's open nice and wide in this, it's easy to get in and out of. Yeah, the, the buckets are comfortable. It's a good fat man car. <laughs> it's got the uh, slide away, is that what they refer to it as? A slide away column, yeah, I think so. or tilt away. No. I'm gonna get in there real quick if I can. Let's see if I could uh, show you how that works. You pull the uh, column, I'm sorry, the uh, shifter towards you, and then it slides. It's got to be in park. It locks into position. And then you, if you pull it towards you, it'll slide. It's got to be up in the park. Uh, it's not working for one hand. Well, I, I put it back in place. I'm having a hard time doing it. There it is. Yeah, no, I got it. I just, I'm doing it with one hand and I had the angle wrong. A lot of, uh, a lot of instrumentation on this car. Oh, there's hope for everybody. These toggle switches are pretty slick. Well, it's a, it's a whole jet. Yeah. It's, they're like, they're like, they remind me a little bit of a Stuart Baker body, you know? Yeah, they have them as well, don't they? Yeah, right. It's a whole jet plane cockpit. And is this the clock? This little? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can barely see it in there. And then these light up for uh, right. indication, indicators. What are these toggle switches? There's two little toggle switches in here. Where, where are we looking? Right there. And one over here. I'd have to, I'd have to actually look. I guess these are three lights. And right. then well, one's maybe these door. aren't toggle switches. Maybe they're. Uh, it's actually like a button. Hang on a second. Don't panic. Okay, so that'll, that's one's door ajar. I don't know what the other two. What about these here? Well, when you own 39 cars, sometimes you forget what the buttons do on yeah, each you're, car. You're so picky. <laughs> Oh, you didn't think I was going to go over the questions before we started filming, did no, you? No, that seems unfair to me. <laughs> and of course it's unfair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't own this car. That's unfair to me. Right, right. And what are the, these are gauges, right? Yeah, right. They're, and you've got the thermometer speedometer? Right. Is that, that right. what they so refer the, to? Yeah, the spe speeds are just like little numbers glued on the top. Right? Yeah. And on the bottom, it, it, they light up as it moves along. And it just moves along? In now? red, right. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's red. Yeah, it doesn't change. Some of these, like DeSoto, change colors, you know, green, white, red, the faster you went. Yeah. Um, this is just red all the way across. That's pretty cool. It's cool. It's not as accurate as having a real speedometer. But... Well, I'm going to move this back again. Lock it into place. And there you go. And your uh, radio and air conditioning knobs are all over here. Mm -hmm. Looking yeah. pretty cool. Right. Power, what is this? Window lock? And the convertible top switch. So if you want to open the trunk, you have to hit the convertible top switch. So if you want the truck trunk open, you have to press down. It seems a little strange. Okay. Well, I'm not going to press anything because no, I don't I mean, want to get out. ejected we'll out of this try thing. To do that and see what happens. This is like uh, right. So advanced uh, futuristic technology in here. Well, I don't know how advanced it is. For '66. Anyway. Sometimes it's not as advanced as far as we'd like it to be. There we go. Look at them at work. Ah, so oh, there cool. we go. So that, that's the lid on latching. Okay. And then it's going to go up. Uh, is the battery uh, hooked up? Oh, we'll find out. 
on the uh, we discussed putting the battery on a, a charger rather than the tender just so it doesn't kill the battery. So we'll do this without the car running. Okay. Oh, it's flipping out. And then the top comes out. Let me know if we're gonna hit the road. Stop. Oh, you missed it. <laughs> oh, you can stop right there. Stop right there. The top's never been down. This is the the, vaden, the, so, the virgin uh, maiden voyage for the top. Right, so there we go. And look how little the amount of room you have back here have once no the top's down. It's, it's all it's all used up. Now the Skyliners had that little uh, square well. It was like two feet by two feet, or not even that much, in that big trunk. Right. And if I'm not mistaken, they might have come with luggage to fit. So there's, yeah, the the, so this doesn't have that. This You yeah. use the whole trunk up in the top. So, so this far. Look how nice, how slick this looks with the red on the tonneau cover. Now you can see the screw spinning. Right through the screw jack. Yeah, they're going to go right in there. And they have to hit that right on the button where they cross the right. And get my uh, camera right. The camera's spazzing out. There we go. There you go. That'll be $500, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on my tab. Well, it is. Whoops, let me close the door. It is. Pretty cool. Oh, it's very cool. I can't quite close the hood because of the terminals, but love the tonneau cover. It just it's makes the whole convertible look. It really does. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so it is nice. I need to wipe that off. See, it's a little dirty. I get the that demerit, fine. right? That's fine. <laughs> it is. It is like a little, like a little rocket ship. It is. It's it's exactly like a rocket ship. Not quite as much as the 61, 2, and 3. Right. But same um, idea. Same idea. The, the 61, 2, this is much higher. You know, these they scoop up more. Yeah. But I mean, same, it's, it's just a beautiful idea. car. Right. The styling is so unique. The instrumentation, there's a lot going on in there to look at. Yeah, they would never do this now in a million years. No. I mean, this is... This is just over the top. Very, uh, very small uh, sun visor though. It's not, not very deep. Yeah. Well, you know, you're supposed to wear sunglasses. Yeah, it's to complete the look. Right. If you're gonna be the coolest guy on the road. You're yeah, gonna have yeah. your sunglasses on. Way, way, way back. Yeah. Let me shut that. Let me get a kind of a stand back a little bit. Yeah, get a better look at it. Right. So. I mean, there are a lot of nice T-birds out there. This is definitely. Uh, a very nice T-Bird. Hank, thank you very much for showing us this T-Bird. Um, folks, tell me what you think. Leave your comments. Definitely subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you like this T-Bird, let us know. And uh, we'll try to catch you later. Thank you, Hank. Good luck.